Hello and welcome. This is it. Good to have you along the Disability Law Show. John Scholes here. Savannah Tamarkin there as well. The most positively reviewed law firm in the country. And Savannah, of course, co-founding partner of said firm. We're here once again to enrich you and educate you on disability law. Why is this an issue with you? Why could this be a problem for you or a family member, maybe a, a best bud or a colleague? Because dealing with a disability insurer can be one heck of a minefield. Maybe you're on disability, getting uh, benefits from them. Maybe you've been cut off or you've been cut off and you've been asked to appeal. It's a minefield. These are big companies worth billions of dollars, lots of glass buildings, people with briefcases, and it can be imposing and scary, but that is why we do this show. You will learn a ton over the next 30 minutes, and I'm going to give you some contact throughout the show you can use, no problem. Phone number 1-855-821-5900, help at disabilityrights.ca, and just disabilityrights.ca. We refer to that because you can go to the website, the media page, and you'll find a radio station across this country where you can catch our hour-long program as well. Again, so informative in the world of disability law. But I digress. We have lots of things to cover on today. Uh, the show, Savannah, three things that individuals with fibromyalgia must know about LTD denials. That's coming up in just a bit. But the week that was, the case of the day, what's going on with you, pal? Well, John, you're absolutely right when you talked about friends and family members and anybody who is looking at this program, viewing this program for the first time or maybe for the 20th or 100th time, the reality is there is always something to take away from this. And our job here is to empower people, to empower individuals out there who either themselves or people they know are dealing with long-term disability insurance companies. These insurance companies are massive entities, but they don't have the power you, that you think that they do. In other words, you as a person dealing with the long-term disability insurance company have more power than you think. Let me tell you about an interesting call I had this week, and this is a very unique call, and the, the, the uniqueness of it comes from the fact that the individual we're speaking with is a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Andy, and we've spoken to him before, John, and he's 47 years old. Uh, he, he, he has a physically laborious type of, of work, uh, of a job. He suffers, uh, suffers from cardiomyopathy, okay? So he has issues with his heart. He has a cardiologist that is treating him, and he's on LTD. He's been approved for LTD by his insurance company. I know this insurance company. We've dealt with all of these insurance companies. Yep. Myself, the lawyers on my team, we know them. Long story short, uh, this insurance company had sent him for treatments at a clinic that does not specialize in heart problems. Now they did that because we are in the COVID era and there were issues trying to get him into the clinic that his cardiologist wanted him to go to uh, at the hospital and that's a cardio clinic at the hospital. Anyway, so he goes to this clinic and this clinic you know, typically deals with broken bones, uh, you know, ligament tears, things like that, right? They don't deal with heart issues. Nonetheless, he's gone there, he's been going there. But a spot just opened up at the cardio clinic. So he got a call from that clinic at the hospital. Well, lo and behold, he told that to the current clinic he goes to, the one he was referred to by the insurance company, and he told his insurance company, and apparently he's been labeled a disturber. He's been labeled as somebody who is an obstructionist, who, you know, he's not playing ball with them. And he's thinking to himself, John, this is my health, this is my life. And so the question that he had is, is he obligated to continue going for treatments at the clinic that the insurance company sent him to, mm -hmm. or can he now go to this cardio clinic that his cardiologist who's treating him wants him to go to? John, I'm telling you right now, and I told him the same thing, 100% he has a right to go to the cardio clinic for several reasons, not the least of which is because his cardiologist is telling him you gotta go there. That's number one, so he's following his doctor's advice. Number two, they have the specialty. They know what they're doing. They deal with heart issues. And number three, at the end of the day, it's not about what the insurance company wants. It's about what's rooted in the insurance contract, the policy. So for everyone out there that has questions about, can the insurance company force me to do this and that, the answer comes down to what is contained in your LTD policy. It's a contractual relationship between you and between the insurance company. And that contract, that LTD policy, contains provision which outlines your obligations as a claimant, as an insured individual, and the insurance company's obligations. So if they tell you, we want you to go to this particular clinic, the policy must stipulate that yes, you might have, must have to go to this clinic. But most policies don't say anything like that. All they say is that you must be engaged in reasonable treatments which is fine, that makes complete sense. Well, to me, it's very reasonable for him to say, I'm not gonna go to the run-of-the-mill clinic that you've sent me to insurance company that treats typical types of injuries, but rather to the clinic at the hospital that specializes in heart issues that my cardiologist told me to go to. 
And I said to him, you make sure you go to your cardiologist, you get a letter from him that outlines exactly why it is that you need to go to that clinic at the hospital. You give that to your adjuster and you say, I am following my cardiologist's advice. And if they give you any trouble, you let me know and then I will intervene. And that's what we do, by the way, John. We don't just give advice. We represent people when they are treated unfairly, when they're denied LTD. We push back against the insurance company because oftentimes insurance companies, they don't care about you, they care about money. And if you do what they say, oftentimes you do it, you know, it to, to the detriment of your own health. So you gotta do what's better for you, what's good for you medically, and you gotta follow what your doctors are saying. Insurance companies are insurance companies, they're not medical people, so why would they have an interest or why would they direct you and tell you you have to go to clinic A or clinic B because we, that's the one we're using, that's the one we want you to go to? It's a good question, John. It's a very good question. And it's the same question of, you know, you have a car accident, God forbid, and you need to repair your car. Why does the insurance company say, you know, you gotta go to this mechanic? Right. Th these are the list of approved mechanics. Why? Why this list of approved mechanics? Now, maybe they're good mechanics, maybe the shops are great, maybe these clinics that treat individuals are good clinics, but you have to ask the question, why are they insisting that I go get treated mm -hmm. by that particular person or that particular clinic? And I can tell you, John, more, on more than one occasion, in fact, many occasions, people have told me, in fact, just as we were about to go on the show, I got an email right now from somebody asking me this exact question, saying, I've been going to this clinic for a while that the insurance company sent me to, rather than to where my doctors told me to go, and it's six months later, and now this clinic is telling the insurance company I'm ready to go back to work, and it's not true. Well, you gotta think to yourself, maybe the reason the insurance company is sending you to that clinic is because they're hoping that that clinic, who obviously owes the insurance company, because the insurance company often pays those bills, right, the clinic's bills, sure. maybe the insurance company does that because they know that a few months down the road, they will get a report that's favorable to them wow. that says that you are ready to go back to work when you're not that disabled, when in fact the truth is the exact opposite. So again, you gotta be careful with that, and we have information on our website, you can contact us if you have those kinds of questions. This is very, very common, John, very, very common. Now the treatment you can have, you know, especially the advice of your own doctor or anywhere else you want to go for treatment, that's fine. How about the other side of that is when the insurance company says you need to go for an assessment and you need to go here for your assessment. Do you have the same sort of leeway or no? No, you don't have as much leeway. That's a good, that's a good point. We're talking about when the insurance company says, hey John, we know you're seeing a psychologist or a physiotherapist right. or whoever it is for treatments, but guess what? We want you to be seen by one of our doctors. Sometimes it's not a doctor. Sometimes it's just some kind of a rehab specialist or someone who gauges your skills to figure out if it would be a fit for another type of job. The point is they want you to be seen for an assessment, not treatment, but an assessment. That's very, very different. Under most LTD policies, in fact, virtually everyone I've ever seen, the insurance company does have the right to have you assessed. But there are limits. There are limits. They can't send you to the same type of assessor because they didn't like the report from the previous assessor. So for example, they send you to a psychologist. The psychologist they sent you to is saying, yeah, you're still disabled. They can't then say, hey, John, we want you to see another psychologist for another assessment because then they're just shopping for a doctor. So again, you have to be careful. You have to be on your guard. When they're asking you to see one of their doctors, one of their assessors, they're not doing this for their health for their financial, well they're doing this for their financial health. Sure. They're hoping they're gonna get something back from this person they're paying to assess you that's gonna help them either end your claim or limit your claim or do something that saves them money. So you gotta be on your guard. Again, reaching out anytime, 1-855-821-5900, help at disabilityrights.ca. We'll get to an email very shortly. But uh, there's a website out there, and uh, your partner, uh, Lior, put it together for the Employment Law Show, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Why bring it up on this one? Because there's a section in there, very useful, a lot of interplay between the two, as we always talk about, uh, about disability law at pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Tell me a little bit about that and how you use it. Yeah, Bucket Employment Lawyer is a phenomenal uh, free website that uh, Lior created, at least the idea, and then we worked on it together. And it contains an LTD component. And the idea is this, you know, we have lawyers in all three provinces where we operate, Ontario, BC, and Alberta. The lawyers do employment law, they also do long-term disability law. And oftentimes, they're intertwined. Oftentimes, people who have issues with their employment also have issues with their long-term disability insurers and vice versa. So people sometimes don't want to call us, they're afraid, for whatever reason. You know, we're nice, we're, we're easygoing guys, but you know, they're afraid for whatever reason, they want to get information. So instead of going on Dr. Google 
where you're going to get most likely false yeah. information or stuff from the U.S., which is, isn't applicable. We've created Pocket Employment Lawyer, which allows you to get quick, free answers to your employment law questions and to your long-term disability questions. So you go on it, and it literally takes you 30 seconds, and you will get a customized answer for free. If at that point you want to contact us, by all means, press the button, and we will be in touch. If you don't, close the browser, nothing happens. But it's a brilliant, brilliant free website that is very quick, uh, quick and easy to use on both employment and LTD. Again, it's pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Use it anytime free and anonymously, by the way. I mentioned an email. Let's get to the first one for the day. You can send one along anytime. We don't just answer them here, of course. We, uh, Savannah and his staff answer them all day long. Help at disabilityrights.ca. Henry uh, writes in, says, after a call with my case manager, my disability payments were cut off. I'm worried that they took the information I gave them about my daily habits and activities out of context to justify ending my benefits. What should I do now? So Henry, this is unfortunately very, very common. And you know, hence the advice we always give people, document your conversations right. with your adjusters in writing, meaning have a little notebook next to you or a laptop or whatever it is you can record stuff on. Make sure you take notes during the conversation, what you said, what the adjuster said, and then shoot an email afterwards to the adjuster saying, here's what was said in a very factual way. Don't use adjectives. You're not blaming anyone. You're just saying, this is what was said, it's what I said, it's what you said. Now, Henry, in your situation here, uh, the fact that your disability payments were cut off and you're still disabled means that we can actually help you now. So there's nothing for you that you need to do right now except for what you've already done, which is contact us. So we'll be in touch and we'll help you because once you've been cut off benefits, you really only have very few options. You can appeal that, which is a big no-no. Do not appeal those, those cutoffs. Or you can walk away from your rights, but why would you do that? There's money owed to you. Or number three, uh, you come to us and we will help you and resolve the case very quickly with the insurance company because their cutoff was invalid. But what do you do to prevent that? You make sure that you confirm these conversations in writing. That way there is a record, a real-time record. And if in fact they do cut you off later on, they're going to be opening themselves up to punitive damages for mischaracterizing what you told them. Does it make a difference if you don't get a response from the email or letter you send them? Nope. It doesn't. Oh, okay. In fact, I would even say that sometimes it's even better because that way you've emailed something to the adjuster and it's left uncontradicted. So it's fantastic. So, no, but you need to confirm these things in writing because it's going to be a he said, she said, and I can guarantee you this adjuster, Henry, cherry picked your information, whatever you've given him, which is very common for them to do. Short break right here, but as mentioned off the top of the show, three things that people suffering from fibromyalgia must know about long-term disability denials. That is on the way. In the meantime, 1-855-821-5900 and help at disabilityrights.ca. It's a disability law show. Lots more coming up. People think you have to sign back a severance offer by a deadline. Employmentlawyer.ca says that is a myth. Deadlines are used as a pressure tactic. Make sure the offer is fair before you sign. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. Can insurance companies deny long-term disability claims for mental illness? When you're suffering from a mental health disability, insurance companies just don't understand. But we do. They can absolutely not force you back to work. If your doctors say you are not ready and you know you're not ready, they cannot make you go back to work. If you have a mental health disability and your claim is denied, don't give up. Give us a call and let us fight for you. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back and get what you're owed. People think you aren't owed severance pay if you are fired for a reason. Employmentlawyer.ca says that is a myth. Most for-cause terminations are false and you are still owed full severance. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. All right, thank you so much for hanging in. Disability Law Show, John Scholes here, and with me, Savannah Tamarkin, co-founding partner, Sam Firu, Tamarkin LLP. They're the most positively reviewed law firm, period, in Canada. To reach out, you know the number by now. If not, we uh, talk about it all the time, 1-855-821-5900. Help at disabilityrights.ca uh, is another way. MyDisabilityQuestions.com, want to mention that. That is another free and anonymous site. What do you use it for? You ask your disability law questions. If you have anything dealing with your disability, an insurance company being cut off, ask about a denial, you can punch it in there and leave it. It's searchable. That's a really cool thing about it. So your question may have been asked previously, 
read the answer and walk away, save you some time. If not, leave your question there and a member of Savant's team will get to it. But as mentioned now, uh, three things that individuals with fibromyalgia must know about LTD denials. Let's get into this, Savant. Fibromyalgia is often looked at skeptically by insurance companies, which make it even more important to have the right doctors treating you. You always talk about that too. Yeah, and especially things like fibromyalgia where, you know, the diagnosis is so controversial. And I know doctors that I've spoken to, they get very frustrated that other doctors are dismissing it. And, uh, you know, uh, insurance companies certainly are questioning it. And I can understand why. It's not a clear-cut diagnosis. It has various components. I can tell you that I'm looking at my phone right now at the Mayo Clinic website. And here's what they say. They say fibromyalgia is a disorder characterized by widespread musculoskeletal pain accompanied by fatigue, sleep, memory, and mood issues. Uh, researchers believe that fibromyalgia amplifies painful sensations by affecting the way your brain and spinal cord process painful and non-painful signals. And it goes on to talk about symptoms, causes, etc. Uh, the Harvard website, the Hopkins website, all these major institutions all talk about fibromyalgia. And they all talk about causes. There are even medications we're going to get into a bit later uh, about that. So you need to make sure that if you're suffering from fibromyalgia or any uh, ailment for that matter, right? Psych psychological issue, depression, whatever it is, you go to the right people who can treat you. And oftentimes the problem is that people go to their own GPs, which is great, but they don't get a referral to a specialist. It's always stronger for your legal claim, let alone from a medical standpoint, for your health, mm -hmm. uh, to not just go to your GP, but to ask for a referral. Some family doctors are more proactive than others. And some of them will simply tell you, we're gonna refer you out to a rheumatologist or a pain specialist or whatever. But it's really, really key, John, to make sure that you get the right help because it's not only going to help you physically with the ailment or psychologically, but also with your legal claim. If you have a specialist that says that you're disabled because of fibromyalgia, in addition to your general practitioner, your family doctor, your claim, your legal claim is that much stronger. And that's what it comes down to for the insurance company is do you have the necessary medical support to support being off work as the criteria requires under the LTD policy. Number two, is this appropriate medical treatments for fibromyalgia are extremely important, not just medically, but also for being approved for LTD as well. Remember what we talked about before, uh, the previous segment, about being engaged in reasonable treatments for whatever it is that you are dealing with, whether it's a psychological issue, you know, whether it's a rehab issue because you know, you've broken your arm, for example, you have an obligation under the LTD policy to get reasonable treatments. And it, that makes sense. I have no issue with that. In fact, I think that's actually a, a good thing, right? I mean, who would not want to get treatments? But it's important to get the right kinds of treatments. And, and so for fibromyalgia, typically, you know, you're dealing with some medications. The FDA, for example, had approved several medications specifically for fibromyalgia. And again, if you have a doctor that deals with fibromyalgia uh, on a regular basis, they'll be able to prescribe those medications. But, but there's other types of things. There's non-med type of, of treatments, whether it's certain types of exercises, certain types of, of habit changes, uh, uh, you know, when do you need to sleep, etc. So it's really, really important to understand that you need to get treatments. You can't just say I have fibromyalgia, leave it at that, and then say to the insurance company there are no treatments, because there are treatments virtually for everything that disables anyone out there. So you have to get the right treatments. If you don't, you're compromising your LTD claim. You have to try to mitigate best you can, right? Yes, Mit mitigate, mitigation is the legal terminology. Right. All that means basically you have to get better. Right. Yeah, oh, you have to try to get better. Right. Many people can't get better, right? This is a lifelong Ill, uh, uh, illness uh, or a long-term illness, and you have that with other illnesses whether it's MS or sometimes yep. cancer or whatever else you have, arthritis, also arthritis, the key is are you getting the right treatments? But with fibromyalgia, because of the controversy surrounding that particular diagnosis and how skeptically insurance companies look at it, it's even more crucial to make sure you are getting consistent treatments and you have the right doctors helping you. Third point about fibromyalgia and dealing with your LTD denials is this proper medical documentation and reports are critical in proving your disability due to the fibromyalgia. I can't stress enough how much medical documentation are critical to the success of a long-term disability claim. Sometimes, John, you know, what insurance companies uh, will do, they'll deny your claim or c cut off your claim, uh, mo more often deny outright, and say there's insufficient medical support right. for your LTD claim. And what happens is when I talk to individuals like that, they tell me, yeah, but I, I sent the insurance company the CD scans, the x-rays, the ultrasound, the blood work, 
But that means, what does that mean? It doesn't mean much for them. Your doctors must provide a report, a letter that outlines what is disabling you. What's a diagnosis? What are the impediments for you working? As the more detailed, the better. That's the key thing here. By the way, uh, one of our websites, uh, ltdfaq.ca, mm -hmm. ltdfaq, frequently asked questions.ca, contains a whole bunch of memos we've created for free to the public. There's no legal jargon on them, uh, in them, uh, and one of them deals with letters from doctors. And so you can take a look at that and you can see exactly what kind of information awesome. does the letter from the doctor need to have to persuade the insurance company. Listen, you may still give that and the insurance company may still deny you. Again, that's where we step in and push back on the insurance company, but it's critical that the right documentation is given to the insurance company because they're very, they're very paper heavy. They look at what's on paper. It's not so much what you tell them, that's one thing, but it's not as important as what the doctors who are treating you are putting down on paper. Let, let me ask you this, so doctors are like any other profession, you know, there's good lawyers, there's great lawyers, there's, you know, run-of-the-mill lawyers. Doctors is the same way. Sometimes you might be dealing with a doctor on, on behalf of one of your clients and the doctor is just not a great writer. They're not filling out these reports to your point as robustly as you want them to. How do you deal with them? How do you deal with that situation? It's tricky. Uh, some of them, some of them, uh, you know, we're very careful. I mean, I've talked to doctors in the past. Sure. There have been doctors who said, can I speak with your lawyer? And I'm very careful to tell the doctor when I speak with them, I am not here to tell you what to write. But let me explain to you what the insurance company is looking for by way of information. These are the questions they have. And I want to dispel any myths that the doctors may have. You know, for example, I have doctors sometimes saying, yeah, but my, my patient is not totally disabled, which is the criteria under an LTD policy. And then I ask the doctor, well, do you know what totally disabled mean? Not in medical speak, not even in layman speak, right. but in insurance speak. Right. Total disability does not mean what you think it means. And so sometimes I speak with these doctors not to tell them what to write, and I make that very clear, but to explain to them what the insurance company needs. And I'm not saying that they need to write a thesis. They're not, I don't need a five page letter. Sometimes a paragraph or two is sufficient, but something enough for the insurance company, for the adjuster looking at the report to understand what the doctor is trying to communicate and whether the doctor agrees that this person cannot work and why. So we're very good at that. We have resources for that. If anybody is in that situation, contact us, go to the websites. You'll get the information you need for your doctors. I did a short time ago mention mydisabilityquestions.com. That is exactly where we're going to go after a short break. In the meantime, here's the number to reach out to Savan and his team anytime. Use it toll free. Of course, 1-855-821-5900. That email address is help at disabilityrights.ca as well. This is a disability law show. Don't go anywhere. People think you should go to the government to get severance pay. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Government can only help you get minimum severance, but not everything you're entitled to. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. If your long-term disability claim is denied, should you appeal? Appeals often fail because insurance companies control the process. So long as you appeal, you're playing by their rules. You should never appeal the denial of your disability benefits. Appeals are just a mirage of false hope. Don't, that's their process. Take it out of their hands and fight for your rights with our help. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back and get what you're owed. People think their employer can make changes to their job. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Your employer can't change your pay, hours, or duties. You may be entitled to full severance pay. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. Okay, welcome back. Thank you so much for hanging in. Disability Law Show. Let's get to MyDisabilityQuestions.com. Free anonymous website for you to ask questions and get them answered by Savant's team anytime. Chloe is up today, Savant. She says, the culture and environment at work has led me to experience debilitating anxiety. My doctor has instructed me to apply for LTD, but I'm worried I'll be denied as my health concerns were triggered by the workplace. What should I do? Very good question, and it's a question that comes up often, but not initially before the application is filed, but afterwards when the insurance company denies the claim, right? Uh, I mean, to, to Chloe's concern here. First of all, Chloe, if your doctor believes you cannot work because of this, 
you should apply for LTD. If you get denied, we will help you. No issues there, okay? But you should apply if you cannot work. Number one. Number two, John, the reason why she's concerned from a legal standpoint is because insurance companies will often deny these kinds of claims if they think that the reason why you're disabled is because there's a toxic work environment. Okay. Now, uh, I have to distinguish here. When an insurance company says we're not paying your claim because it's workplace rooted, what they're saying to you is you have an employment issue on your hands. You don't have an LTD issue, meaning that if you were to work in a different environment, and it would not be toxic, there would be no issue. So you're not really disabled because of a condition that is just generalized. You're, you're specifically unable to work in this particular environment. If that is correct, well then guess what? We have employment lawyers on staff and they can help Chloe to deal with the employer, no issue there. But what happens in many cases is people like Chloe end up developing generalized conditions. And what I mean by that is imagine you become depressed and anxious because of a work toxic environment. Well, in that situation, many people become, it becomes a generalized condition, meaning that uh, it, it just takes over their lives. It doesn't matter now if you move them to a different company, different office, doesn't matter. They are now depressed. There is this high level anxiety. They cannot work. They cannot function. It may be originated in a particular workplace environment, but now it's everywhere for them. Right. It doesn't matter anymore if they're in a different place. In that situation, the LTD insurer must respond and they must pay. But they oftentimes deny claims because they conflate the two. And they say, no, 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 it's a workplace issue. Well, no, it may be, maybe it was a workplace issue, now it's generalized. So again, uh, in a case like this, where it's generalized, she has an LTD claim, we can help her. If she doesn't have an LTD claim, well, guess what? We can still help her with the employment side. Yeah. And in fact, in many cases, John, it's intertwined. So there is an LTD component to the case, and then we have employment lawyers who help on the employment side. That's some of the unique things about our firm. One of the actually key unique uh, aspects is that, in fact, we have employment lawyers and LTD lawyers and hybrid lawyers who do both. It's absolutely important. So, Chloe, please reach out. We can talk in more detail about your specific case, your specific circumstances, and we can guide you and tell you what you need to do. But definitely apply for LTD in this case. Let's get to a quick email. The last couple minutes of the show, Savan Farhad writes in, says, I've just been denied CPPD after being uh, on LTD for two years. After the denial, I received a letter from my insurer proposing a return to work plan that will begin in the next few months. Is this due to the CPP denial? While I'm continuing to undergo treatment, my uh, doctors believe I'm still unable to work. It's very likely, uh, Farhad, because of the CPP denial, insurance companies will often uh, cut people off around that two-year mark because that's when the, the test for disability changes. It's really, really important to understand that insurance companies oftentimes will ignore what the doctors are saying. And they, even though you're still unable to work, not just in your own occupation, but any occupation where you can make what you're earning through LTD, the 60, 65% of your pre-disability income, you need to understand that if you are still disabled and are unable to work, you have a case and the insurance company should not be cutting you off, irrespective of what happened with CPP disability. That's a different program, that's a government federal program. It should not impact your LTD. If you're denied there, you can deal with CPP disability, but your LTD should continue to go on. And if they don't, and in this case they haven't, we can help. CPP, I mean, she shouldn't be scared, or Farhad, he shouldn't be scared anyway, because CPP is generally a tougher test to, to reach, right, as far as that can be? Yeah, you're right, exactly. But irrespective of that, at yeah. the end of the day, the LTD policy is what we look at. If Farhad is unable to work in any occupation for which he is able, like he was trained to or has educational yeah. experience, he should not have been cut off. And we deal with these cases day in and day out, and we resolve them quickly, efficiently, and we put money in individuals' pockets. That is why they do both, both employment and disability law. You want to reach out anytime to Savan and his team. We gave you a bunch of websites to uh, use and contact as well. The phone number again, one 855 821-5900. You want to uh, send an email along, help at disabilityrights.ca. There's mydisabilityquestions.com. And those list of little memos in plain speak, very nice, ltdfaq.ca. That's a winner as well. Reach out anytime. More Disability Law Show next time. Thanks for joining us. People think you are only owed two weeks' pay when you lose your job. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. You may be owed much more than two weeks per year. Don't settle for less. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca.